Welcome to the Facial Recognition <laughs> Comedy Podcast. Hi, everybody. Hey. I'm, I'm Paula V. I'm Fizza. I'm Zara. And our guest today is... Suba. Yeah. Yay, Suba Agarwal. Is it Agarwal? Mm-hmm. Okay. I she make sure I'm saying it right. is a stand-up comedian. You recently moved here. You've been in and out from New York. Yes. Um, and you are on a bunch of our shows. <laughs> <laughs> we love it. Yes. Yay. Yeah. You're one of the originals. We love having you on. And also, you're a, a fellow New Yorker. Or do you consider yourself a New Yorker because you were there for so long? I don't know. I don't know if I could ever claim it because I wasn't born and raised. You know what right. I mean? But I was Who there. Was? <laughs> <laughs> like, People are very angry about people calling themselves native New York. Mm. <laughs> so you're from the Midwest originally. Yeah, I grew up in the suburbs of Chicago. Based and, on your set, I feel like you have the anger of a New Yorker. <laughs> I mean, she's like you've been you there could, for about ten years, right? I feel like you yeah, could it's cut like. A bitch. I, I mean, you can be there for like six months and you'll you'll be get, angry. You'll, you'll, you're like, why? Uh, I I was there for like seven years continuously, and then last year I was back and forth like half the year, uh, so it was almost eight, and then. This year, I'm going to go back every second I get, but it's probably going to only in total end up being like three, four months. Mm. So how's that working out for you in the past year, the bi-coastal oh, lifestyle it's, between it's New York and L.A.? a nightmare. It's the no. absolute <laughs> I thought she was going to be like, it's amazing. I know, I was that's like, what nope, I was expecting. Twist. So no. It's like unless you're loaded and you have two apartments, you're essentially just a vagabond. Like, I just have my shit in suitcases <laughs> and in storage. My mailing address is my ex-boyfriend's apartment. Which Boo. Is like <laughs> Ew. So wh- where is your ex-boyfriend? In New York? He's in New York. So, so do you have to go pick up your mail at yeah. his place? He normally, he's, he's actually, we're really good friends he's um he's my he's still my best friend so like he's pretty chill so he'll so either... you ain't done fucking yet <laughs> <laughs> well only on my birthday and it's always a bad decision oh. um, like... <laughs> so when's your birthday not until january so okay. there's a while okay. um, <laughs> it's nah we we don't work as a couple but like you know we get along but yeah, he's been pretty chill about it because he knows I'm. I don't want to move to LA, and so like my guild membership is in New York. Like my all of my, he could honestly steal my identity. Like my all <laughs> my my official addresses. Are mm-hmm. his. <laughs> Your driver's license. Yeah. Uh, is that a smarter decision for you now that since you're talking about your guild membership, like as a as an actress and an entertainer, is it better or more advantageous to for you to be quote unquote based out of New York, even though um, you spend a lot of time in LA? Well, th- there's just more opportunities I hear for I feel like in terms of writing and acting, but in terms of stand up, the city doesn't come close unless. I guess if you've put in a ton of time uh, into the comedy store and like the clubs and they know you, I guess that's one way to work your way up from the ground. And then maybe it would be kind of comparable to the low end of New York. You know <laughs> right, what I mean? right. I totally In get terms it. of stage time, but I don't like, I've already been doing stand up for 11 years. I'm not going to like park cars at the comedy store. Like it's just, it's right. hard when you're not successful enough to walk in. To a place and have them give you a ton of stage time, but you're at this weird place where you're like, I don't know how to make you see me when they're only really looking at like new, new comics. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's not that as an Asian woman, you would be bad at parking cars. (laughs) Let's (laughs) make that clear. Oh, I'm the worst. No. Oh, yeah, you just got in a car accident, right? (laughs) Oh, my God. So Easter Sunday, all the brown kids, the the brown comedians (laughs) in LA, we had basically an Easter brunch at an Indian restaurant, like kind of a hole in the wall. What, what's it called? I don't It's something sweet. Yeah, Sweet House or something like that. It yeah. is Sweet House. That's I mean, what it it's is. great. Um, Suba was on her way, but jacked up her car. <laughs> uh, can I also say that when we posted that picture of all of us, all the Desi comedians in LA at an Indian like restaurant, someone later was like, <laughs> Mike Ishak later was like, Weren't you in India recently? Oh <laughs> and I was my like, god. No, these are people you know. <laughs> oh my god. That's so funny. Shout out to Mike Isha. <laughs> we still like you anyway. <laughs> it's so funny. Wow. So Suba, what happened? Oh, it's just I ended up uh having to move. It was like my car got damaged because it wasn't really my fault. It was like in it's like tandem parking and then like two cars on the front yard and like when someone was pulling out they scratched mm. my car and I was like flipping out because I didn't want to play the insurance deductible because I wasn't sure exactly who had done it and no one was like oh we did yeah. it like no one was copying to it so I was like whatever you know like it's just it, it, it sucks high stress also yeah. it, it sucks because yeah. it's like because you're not settled it's like not your car yeah it's, it's not a rental your, yeah it's like you're just kind of caught between things 
Dang. <laughs> Wait, so I gotta go to New York for stand up? I gotta yeah. do that. That's what you're telling me? That's well, all I wanna do. You're saying we should all move to New York, is what <laughs> you're saying. <laughs> we'll all live together at your ex boyfriend's place. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just that. feel like, in terms of stand up, like in stage time and stuff like that, there's it doesn't compare in my mind, especially when you're starting. I, I don't know how people start here. Like, it's gotta I be. It's so hard. Like, I look at the mics and stuff, like, they're just, like, compared to New York to here. I'm like, there's, it's so much better. I don't know what happened, but they haven't made me stop doing comedy yet. So, (laughs) like, they just let me keep going. Yeah, I I did, like, three mics in SF over the course of, like, nine months. And then I moved down here and I, like, went hard. And I think I, like, was kind of lucky in that I didn't completely eat eat shit all the time when I started, which is common. So, like, that, like, saved me a little bit. But I don't know. Like, I think if you... Like we're completely like foreign to comedy because I was around like improv and like I absorbed mm-hmm. every like all the podcasts, all the shows. Like I knew everything about standups, so I was like in the mentality of it. But I think if you're just like totally different and you start out, it's got to be so hard. I see like new comics starting out a lot, and it's got to be like tough. I like, go back to New York a lot for yeah. that reason. I leave I leave L A yeah. at least once a month, and it, I go to other scenes. I you go can, to SF, SD, Portland, in New York. Seattle. You can do easily four four shows a night, like mm-hmm. it's just like that. It's so efficiently. That's so dope. And like. Like, other comics will say this to me. You know, like, the older ones, well, they'll be like, okay, you've spent 11 years working your ass off as a comedian. It's like now you come to L.A. to sell what you've created. They're like, you're in the right place. But I don't know. Like, I mean, that's why I'm here. Like, I'm writing and I'm doing stuff and whatever I can. But at my core, like, it's, like, outside of business. Like, at my core, like, stand-up is what makes me happy. This is what I want to do. So I'm constantly trying to go back for that reason. But I see you get up every night. So almost not necessarily like this week it was dry. It was like uh, four or five. And I thought I was only going to have one. But then like I ended up taking a bunch of stuff last minute. And it was like, well, like four or five compared to what I'd be doing in New York is like not, you know, like four or five a night. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So it's like and four or five in L.A. is considered good. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So do you have a strong opinion of L.A.? Because I know we we talked about it briefly. I ran into you. I, think I feel like you don't have not strong opinions of everything. Yeah. <laughs> I want to hear your strong opinion yeah. about Los Angeles. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking hate it. <laughs> she said it. I why do, it why do you hate it so much? Being. Well, because, like, it's number one. Just I don't like the industry side of what we do. And that's mm-hmm. what Los Angeles is. It's yeah, the industry it's all side. Industry. It's a bunch of, like, vapid, soulless vacuums of people who've had their dreams sucked out of them Hi. and are now just like hey. well, <laughs> welcome to the vapid soulless vacuum of people podcast <laughs> we're all empty like, on the inside. every now and then you just feel this collective sadness in the city that we're all striving for the same dream you and the reality that's palpable you're breathing it in right yeah. now. but you didn't feel it in new york not as much because there's a mix of more regular people. Like, well, that, but, okay, so uh, I was on antidepressants when I lived in Manhattan because yeah. that city, like, really takes a toll on you. And so... Oh, it does. It's stressful. At least whenever whenever I would go get my refill at the Dwayne Reed, they would be out. And then, like, within a 10-block radius of all the Dwayne <laughs> Reeds and Rite Aids and Walgreens, they would all be out. That entire city, that entire island is on antidepressants. Oh, don't get me you wrong. Like, New York need, is a horrible that's place. Why, oh, that's why they're happy, because they can admit that they need antidepressants, whereas oh here it might mix up with the plastic surgery. Have you tried <laughs> <I'm kidding>. yoga? <laughs> <laughs> Have you tried yoga and affirmations? <laughs> and smoking weed? Have you just gone up <laughs> Runyon <laughs> Canyon and just screamed into the abyss? You don't need antidepressants. Oh my God. I need all of it. I need oh that God. and the antidepressants. This is over the there taking everything. notes right now. The What did you Into say? The, the plastic abyss? surgery? Just, yeah. Give me everything. Dude, it's crazy. I can't. Keep okay. Avoid. I don't feel like Hollywood like at all. Like I don't understand the mentality. People say that I network and I'm like, I'm just loud. Like that, that's like I've always That's been part that way. of Hollywood. If you're the loudest person in the room, you will win. This is why you're doing yes. so well, Paul Levine. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to win. But like, Sarah. But I don't understand. <laughs> Every time you drunk some, <laughs> I just laugh every time Zara says Pallavi's loud and Pallavi says Zara likes to party. Yeah, <laughs> this is just in the middle chilling. <laughs> I'm just chilling. Um, but like I, I, saw, I went to like, a barn. Yeah, you went to a barn and I pet animals. I'm chilling. That's, that's a good day. That's a fact today. It's a good day. Yeah, I'll talk I, but, about that later. But like, I just I I saw like on Facebook there was like some some chick posted about like Botox, and then all the other chicks were like, "Yeah, I'm gonna follow this to see like what's recommended for Botox." And I was like, "You're all gorgeous. Like, what do you do? <laughs> like, I didn't realize how real it is, and like how many people do all that shit." I have friends all over the country doing Botox now. Like, that's, that's just crazy on the mainstream. Me. All right, mainstream. 
Bow ties doesn't know. seem that weird to me because I feel, I mean, it seems scary, but I'm like, I could just walk in and walk out. That's not that big of a, it's, to me, it's like when you go under a knife, like, that freaks me out. Yeah, but I've seen people's faces get paralyzed. <laughs> well, don't go to <laughs> your gynecologist yeah. to get Botox. Go to like yeah. your, your oh, face okay, Botox. Fizza. <laughs> people do that. Wait, really? Yeah. yeah. I don't know shit, man. There are yeah. dentists that are also, they're <laughs> certified to give you Botox. So wow. that doesn't mean I you thought, should. Yeah. They, I, I mean, they're not joking. certified to necessarily stuff a pillow. So like if they're sticking Juvederm up your lips and they don't know what they're doing. Your, your mouth might look like a tooth. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> so, Suba, you subscribe, Ew. are you, you subscribe to injections, just not plastic surgery? I would, I would probably, anything that like didn't seem like that big of a deal, like uh, people get face peels, I guess. Which is it, but that doesn't, like, anything where there's no downtime and I'm not going to die, I would, mm. it doesn't seem like a big deal to me. <laughs> Sippa just doesn't want it to get in the way of her stage time, <laughs> basically. <laughs> She's just like, I can't be under, because then I won't be able to hit this, the shows that night. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you bring everybody into my room, then I'll do whatever you want. <laughs> I feel I feel that like that's like my core too. Is I just want to be on stage all the time, and the administrative stuff like bothers me yeah. <laughs> that I have to do it. Mm-hmm. But I see you um, when I've seen you at like uh, like the store, like at other mics and stuff. When you're waiting, you're like constantly doing other shit. Like you're listening to your old sets. You're like rewriting. That's like super admirable. <laughs> you're like constantly going, constantly working. So. I actually ran into Suba in an audition. <laughs> and we both had our own respective meltdowns after. Yeah. After. Mm. I, I literally we went to my car. For that later. Oh, yeah. And then, and then this this was the day on- of the meltdown? When we all no, auditioned? No, no, no. no. Okay. So we, they auditioned first. And then, like, they apparently the per- people saw our facial rec show and then asked everyone to audition from the facial rec show. Huh. Uh, so <laughs> so we, I don't know what happened to it. But we, like, we also auditioned for that much later on. Yeah. Yeah, I wonder yeah. who got who who ended up doing it. Probably yeah. someone with like three million cast. Instagram followers. It's, it's a it's a it's a, it was a th- can we say what the role was? I, I don't would, think we're allowed to. Oh, okay. yeah, I, I don't know yeah. any of the rules. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but obviously, if we all went in for the lead, there's a certain type of there's a certain <laughs> casting they were looking for. Yeah. You know. Mouthy women. That's yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So w- let's let's talk about this meltdown. Yeah. This collective meltdown between the both of you. So I, yeah, event. I showed up when you were about to leave and, you know, like I was sort of trying to I was in the zone, but you seemed a little like, I don't know. What were you going through when you were about to leave? Um, I don't know if you were preoccupied. I was more like she told me to read it in a way that didn't make sense to me. <laughs> so it was like I had one read with it and I worked with an acting coach on it and like. Neither of us felt like the way she wanted it read, like, made sense. So it was hard for me to do what she wanted. So that was upsetting to me because I feel like I should have been more flexible. But in my head, when she was telling me to do it this specific way, I was like, this doesn't make sense to me. So I I couldn't do it and I didn't take my time. Yeah. And I wanted to ask to redo it again just to try and do it her way, just to be like, screw it. But I was like, Whatever, you know. I had to start over eight times. Get out. The, the, a, the AC wasn't on. I couldn't breathe, so she had to go turn the AC on. Like, I literally thought that she thought I was a freak show when <laughs> I left. But I ended up getting a call back. That's awesome. That Which was nuts, because I literally left. I walked to my car. I started, like, I started scream crying, because, like, I couldn't believe Screaming that into I, the abyss. Yeah, scream, <laughs> but, like, you know, in the car. Like, you know, like, I think I punched something. Like, I was so upset because, like, I never had that experience where, like, I, you know, I coached for it. And then, like, I kept forgetting the first sentence. And then it became this thing and it was hot. And I don't know. I thought I fucking bombed that that shit. Do you guys feel like you've always put a lot of pressure on yourselves, like, growing up, doing, like, like school, comedy, everything, like... Yeah, but this particular role was, like, I think it was an Indian comic, a, a, a comic who was a, a woman yeah. who was Indian. So it's yeah. like, oh, yeah. well, there was extra pressure. Yeah, because it's essentially yourself, but you have to play yourself how the casting director sees the role. And <laughs> I unfortunately, the casting director, I don't know, like, I came out of there feeling like shit for a week. Oh, really? And I'm like, I'm not even an actress. I'm just here having fun, like, I, yeah. you know, like, I, I, trying. And I, she made me feel like shit. Oh, really? Yeah. Really? She's what? like, you're nice so cute. Me. You're so cute. You're adorable. You should take acting classes. <laughs> and I've been oh, taking no. acting classes for two years. I mean, it was Ooh. different because... You know, like I was nervous. It was the first time I'm actually meeting with like an actual casting director yeah. for a lead. It's my first time going in for a lead. 
That's oh, really that, oh, that, yeah. that, that was like too. my like, maybe my like second. That was my yeah. first like real audition. Yeah. There was like another audition we yeah. had for like a sketch thing that you and I went into. Yeah, but there, that was like my first real audition. And it was like so Hollywood. I was like, uh, when do I start? And like, yeah. and then she was like, oh, you can start now. And, and like, she was trying to like be nice to me. And I was like, I'm so sorry. I've I've never done this before. Like, I was just like so cliche about mm-hmm. it. But then I did it. She just called. She said I was cute and natural. But it was like mm-hmm. obvious. I'm like, I've clearly yeah. never done anything like yeah, this yeah. before. I don't know. Anyway. But okay, but you were okay. You guys both got or you got called back for it. And I ran into Kieran. Kieran had mm-hmm. called. We all we all literally went in for the same role. We did. So Monrock, um, also Monrock another comedian oh, just, friend of ours who's on our shows. So she was there. She was in the waiting room when I got there. We were all at the, in the waiting room. I'm just gonna mention that she's hella pregnant. She's like seven, Super eight months pregnant. Shit. Yeah, so it she, was did, just she, funny performed on, she performed on she performed on Conan coming. pregnant and she came like her first line was amazing. She came da- she came out and she was just like I don't know if I want to have kids. <laughs> She's like fully pregnant. It's so funny. Yeah. Uh, shout out to Monroe. Amazing. <laughs> but uh, so she goes in for this role, and apparently, like I, I don't know, the casting director was like, "Yeah, our producer went to your show show in Westside at the Westside Comedy Theater and thought you all would be great to to audition for this." And then she comes in, and she looks at Monroe like. How did the producer not realize you were pregnant? I'm like, probably because the producer was lying <laughs> that she actually came to her show. You know, but she anyway, probably just thanks saw for the opportunity, guys. Yeah, I mean, sure, but oh it's like, God. you're clearly not, I mean, you clearly can't tell us apart, right? Like, that's why you call in all of us. Even the pregnant lady who's I mean, like, I'm not going to get this like role. I mean, yeah. no, maybe she, they just saw the flyer. I don't know. That's probably it. Yeah. They just don't it was lie. fun. I like learned a lot. I, I was texting Fizza the whole day before. I was like, what are, how, what are even headshots? Like, I didn't understand how to print it. I was like, I had to cut this shit. Why can't it be eight by 11 or eight and a half by 11? Why can't it be a normal page size? Yeah. I was just like, it was my first everything. It was great. <laughs> yeah, that was that's fantastic to be able to go in for something like that. Like I that know. was your first audition. Yeah, I mean, one. I did like the first audition thing. was for a lead. That's yeah, pretty great. yeah. But yeah, that was my first real one. But mm-hmm. anyways, going back. <laughs> Sorry, back to Suba. Uh, so okay, can we go? Like you were born in Chicago or near Chicago, mm-hmm. and then you grew up around there. And the, did you go to school there or no? I went to college in Pittsburgh. Oh, where? I went to Carnegie Mellon. Oh, I went down the street, University of Pittsburgh. Oh, nice. I would always go over there because I, I went to CMU for my master's. So that was like uh, 2012 to 2014. And I was always like over there, like t- like experimenting in the Pittsburgh labs and stuff. <laughs> That's so cool. When were you there? Uh, I was there when was I, 2017 to uh, 2020. Wait, what? I graduated a year early. 2017? That was last year. Oh, 2007. 2007. 10 years ahead of herself. Why did I do that? 2007 to 2010. There you go. live in the future. I graduated last year. That's what I meant. (laughs) She's like super young. Oh, so you graduated early. You hustled and like got out of there. Yeah, I was not going to stay in Pittsburgh. Are you? (laughs) Yeah, it's great. It's great. It's like okay for like people who are students, but if you're a young professional, that shit is not the best. I don't know. So did you start stand up in Pittsburgh? No, I started in Chicago. And then... I continued in Pittsburgh, and that was a nightmare because I would have to drive. Sometimes I drive like eight hours a day just to like do oh stand up. So you started you started really young. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. Yeah, I started when I was seventeen. How'd your uh, like family feel about it? Oh, they didn't like it at all. They for they took me to my first show, and then they saw it and forbade me from doing stand up. And so I would like. <laughs> Did I you love the idea. Yourself? Whatever. Did you censor yourself? Well, I wasn't saying anything crazy when I was seventeen, though. I was making yeah. fun of my parents, but they didn't care. They were like, "That's that's good." <laughs> I think it's so funny when people are like, "I forbid you from doing this." I'm like, "That's not a real word anyone uses anymore." <laughs> that's ridiculous. Okay, but, so you so you continued stand up in Pittsburgh. There's like the improv there. What else is there? Um, they had a funny bone that I think kind of disappeared. I've really been keeping tabs, but like there were some bar shows and like music mics, and because there weren't a lot of comedians going to the music mics, I could do those and like. I would just, like, sometimes drive out to Erie, Pennsylvania. I would drive out to Ohio. I would drive anywhere I could to do shows. Like, I'm surprised. It's honestly a miracle I'm not dead. Because, like, my mom. <laughs> I feel like that about what? all of us. All of the places we've been. <laughs> she she gave me my ca- uh, her car, like, a year in because she found out I had essentially been, like, hitchhiking to, like, get to, like, I would be. Are you serious? Like, because I, I, I didn't. I wanted to get back to the bar. Like, go to the bar to college. And people I'd meet at the bar would be like, oh, yeah, I'm driving back that way. I'll take you. Like, that's how I. I got around a lot wow. of time. with like, like friends though Damn. not sort of not on the highway not on the highway with okay. my thumb out no but friends like, or acquaintances that you met like friends of friends at bars I guess stuff. I I guess I do that with I've done that with comics here 
where I'm like, okay, like I just met you at this show. I'll get a ride from, and I've done that in other cities too with comics. Not the best idea. <laughs> Not the most trustworthy group of people. Especially because like a lot of them are just like bar patrons. Like yeah, it wasn't, but you it seem like you would have mace on you. Like uh, me? I, yeah, you'd seem no, like I don't. I'm like really nonviolent. What? Like it's Stop really it. it's. I know everybody's gonna hear me, but it's like it's really everybody's bad. I'm like I'm super nonviolent. I'm super like nonviolent, and I like I would like I. St- stop fights with my body but I wouldn't like hurt like hit somebody you know what I mean like Why? she'll absorb yeah. violence but yeah. she it won't emanate from her Cause I, have you hit someone it feels really good no I've done like <laughs> in my college I have I've never like hit hit someone but like in my college we like would wrestle and do all these like crazy traditions and stuff so I can like it's a whole thing maybe what maybe on our next episode we'll talk about my weird college life and how it was just insane and I used to beat up people we didn't beat okay. each other up we just okay. wrestled all right okay. was, it, was it to solve differences it was like tradition like, I, I challenge you it to was, a wrestle no or it's a whole not, thing I okay. can't get into it, but it's okay. like it was like a school tradition t- sort of thing but so I would wrestle dudes but I've never and so I know was, I can like throw my weight around was school in a bunker like <laughs> um, my school was Caltech so kind of <laughs> there's a whole tunnel system that yeah, people they don't know they wrestle at Caltech yeah we're weird okay I get it <laughs> what the anyway but, this is a PSA so for everyone if you're driving <laughs> around with random people or at all you know just carry pepper spray I don't you. have pepper spray you I don't have some. I should get but also isn't it statistically true that like people get their weapons turned against them when they pepper spray them? you'll be fine yeah. that's a that's a long distance weapon oh okay like they, you should be using pepper spray when they can't <laughs> snatch I, it should up. Should I get hands? like a samurai sword too? Is that long distance and just <laughs> really, really more, long one. I, I Silva Agarwal told me to get a gun. <laughs> <laughs> it's knives. That, knives that will be a, turned against you if you oh, don't okay. know how to. That hold would be a great flip throwing, out of context. What about like throwing stars? That would be fine. <laughs> okay. I gotta practice so my wait, aim. So wait, Suba, who have you beat up lately? Yeah, because you're saying it feels really great <laughs> yeah, to hit what somebody. <laughs> Well, I mean, when I was a kid, I used oh, to beat okay. the shit out of my brother. Um, oh, yeah, my brother and I fought. Younger brother or older brother? Older. Well, I wouldn't beat the shit out of him. More like hit him and then He would run. let you be. <laughs> <laughs> my brother I and I used to fight. such a dick. <laughs> <laughs> would he hit you back or did he actually He would try, but I would run. So that this was like This bitch just move. got fast. <laughs> How much older is he? He's like three, four years, between three and four. Okay. So those were the first hit and runs you're involved in. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, okay. So you grew up, you went to Pittsburgh and then after Pittsburgh, did you move to New York? Mm-hmm. Okay. And what were you doing in New York? Um, I had a job as an actuary. Like I needed a company. Oh to, shit. Really? Yeah. What, is that what you majored in? Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. And I needed a company to pay me to move out. So, cause I didn't have any money. So mm-hmm. I got hired and then I worked there for about three months before I quit. And then I just worked like part time retail so I could focus on comedy. So you did the corporate thing for a full three months out of college. <laughs> yes. And then she you're really like, wanted Fuck this. I'm just going to do stand up. I literally just did it so they would pay me to move there. Like I knew I was going to quit the entire time. That's and so like, funny. But to be an actuary, like you have to go through all those tests and stuff. Yeah, I didn't know that. What the oh. <laughs> So did you take the test? This <laughs> bitch. What ended up happening is I was a bioengineer. What? Me too. I like that stuff though. It's interesting to yeah. me. But they were going to make me take four years the way the labs were spaced yeah. out. And I was like, no, I'm entering as a sophomore. I'm not staying in Pittsburgh for four years. That's ridiculous. So I switched my major overnight. My roommate was like, oh, there's tons of actuary jobs in New York. My dad's always telling me to be an actuary. Mm-hmm. So I just changed my major overnight without really looking were into it. Were you a math major? <laughs> um, actuarial science. So oh, it's okay. like math with a focus on econ and statistics. Okay. And it. so like... And then, like, literally, I think, like, the first week I found out about the exams. And I, I that's how I had my first ever panic attack. It's like I got the study manual for this. It's like <laughs> literally, I'm not even exaggerating, maybe like half a foot thick. Like, it's ridiculous. It's hard. And I had a full blown panic. That's the first panic attack. Did you know you were having a panic attack? What was that experience? That like? was like, well, that's, I knew what it was when it was happening, but it also made me realize what was happening on stage for the first five years of my stand up career. Oh, <laughs> dude, the same thing happened to me. Well, not like on stage, but I used to have panic attacks growing up when my parents and I would like fight and stuff. Yeah. And I didn't know what they were. And then I I became a first responder in my college. Like I like had like a bag and everything. And I was like first on <laughs> the scene the for people. Fuck is I, 
know. She wrestled. She, she absorbed the people. Attacks. The people who wrestled needed to get to help. Okay, okay. but <laughs> were you the one wrestling them and then show up as a first? Oh wait, would literally, you, I, would I've, you beat I've, the I've, shit out of them and then fix them after? <laughs> Is that what was going on? That's how I kept them near me. No, um, <laughs> so but I did the first responding thing, and we were in this class, and we learned what panic attacks were, and it dawned on me. I was like, this whole time, my parents told me I was being dramatic, <laughs> which it kind of is a little bit, but also panic it's a fucking panic dramatic. attack. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It was more like my hands would go numb, and I yeah, thought I were was breathing enough. Allergic to the mic or getting electrocuted. Like I didn't know what was oh happening. <laughs> so, and then I like, I was like, I guess I just have because I do have a metal allergy, but it would be weird that it would be so. <laughs> Yeah, but I was like, I don't know what the hell. Well, kudos is. to you for still doing it for five years before <laughs> yeah. realizing what it was. Wow. Jesus Christ, you really wanted it. Yeah, awesome. Eventually, it went away. But I was like, the what first, is this? my first year stand up, I had to go to the bathroom like five times, like in the minutes before going up. So I'd be like half the time coming out of the bathroom, my hands are still wet, not because I didn't wash them, but because I washed them. <laughs> so. Wait, so then you ended up in New York. You quit your job after three months, and then you just hit the comedy scene mm-hmm. hard. Mm-hmm. And so what was that like? How many mics a night were you doing? Um, shows? I was doing as many mics as I could, which is probably four or five a night. And then um, it was just that for years and years and years and years. So what are all the retail stores that you like? What's your resume look like? I, I, I want to see I want to see this bitch try to convince me to buy shoes. I, know. <laughs> I worked for Apple. That was the only place oh, that shit. would hire me because I was so overqualified. Like That's no one crazy. else was going to hire oh. Oh, awesome. It's kind of sad though, because like some people at Apple had PhDs and shit, and it's just like, what happened? <laughs> and they weren't doing comedy. <laughs> no, they just were PhDs. They were. They're like, we thought this meant literal geniuses, so we came here. <laughs> <laughs> but like, Apple's one of the few companies I would hire. Like, legitimately, yeah. like very highly educated people. Yeah, I have friends from Caltech that like work there and stuff. Yeah. And it, like, it were, they were doing like theater and stuff outside. I mean, of there's it. some idiots. There's a, there's a large pool of idiots also working for. <laughs> So when did you when when did you quit your Apple gig and just start um, when did you start making money off comedy in order was, to quit the retail job? I think it was it my yeah it was my first writing gig uh, okay. working for a comedy knockout on True TV. That how was many the time I quit. how many years in? Uh, probably eight or nine. Yo, I'm tired already. <laughs> eight, so think about it. Eight or nine years in New York. That's like twenty in LA. <laughs> think about it. I don't want to think about it. <laughs> Man, we almost had the same life. <laughs> we, what if I became an actuary instead of bio engineer? <laughs> it's so Man. boring. It's so boring. Yeah. I don't do know. you have any regrets? Do you like? Do your parents ever like tell you sometimes like, no, oh, you should go back to yeah. being an actuary? Because your mom gave you your car, so they forbade it, but then they knew that you were well, still doing it. Well, because they knew I was going to do what I wanted no matter what. Like, yeah. if my mom had forbade me from doing comedy, I had planned to move into a women's shelter. Like, yeah. there is no way they were going to stop me. If I really wanted something, and my mom knows this about me, she knows that the less, the more she pushes me, the more I'm going to go and do it on my own. Yeah. And if they participate a little bit, at least I can keep tabs on me. So that's where yeah. they were at. Because, like, the bottom line is if I want something, you are not going to stop me from getting it. Yeah. So, like, and she knew that. Hell yeah. But I think, like, I don't, I guess my relationship with my parents is the same way. Like, I just keep doing what I want, but they still have hope. I don't understand. <laughs> What's the hope, though? What do they want? Um, I don't know. They still have, like, ideas for, like, what I should be doing, and they have, like, ad- like advice and opinions and stuff. But I'm just, like, they know that I've rebelled against, like, everything my whole <laughs> life. And, I like, I don't know what, like, why they still try <laughs> when yeah. I have my mind set on something. <laughs> it's really, uh, it's cute, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. It's admirable as parents. Yeah, but. mine uh, might have uh, given up. That's great. <laughs> I think, honestly, I think Trump broke my father because he oh, always, no. like, they had this idea of, like, respectability and, like, mm. oh, my dad's big dream for me was to run for president one day. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even kidding. And then, like, That is so um, sweet that your dad thinks you could be president. <laughs> it was, like, it was ridiculous. My dad but, was trying to marry me off and didn't think I could do anything with my life. <laughs> oh, so. shit. But you have you an older brother. Yeah. yeah. So they just... Like bypassed him. They're like, he'll what? be vice president. He, yeah. <laughs> my brother, like, it's because I, like, my mom entered us in speech competitions from a very young age. Yeah. And I was, like, good at it. And <laughs> so I could you talk. could have been president or a stand up comedian. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Amazing. it's a very yeah. similar skill set. Yeah. I could see Suba doing TED Talks, though. Oh, God. Yeah. Like, I see that happening. <laughs> but I was also, like, I was a lot, I guess, quicker, um, like, you know, like, I, not necessarily comedically, but yeah. just with comebacks. So my dad was like, oh, you'd be a good politician. So we always had that. That's and so he's like, funny. He wants you to do debates. <laughs> That's exactly what yeah. it was. And he was like, 
uh, he just had that dream, and he's like, oh, you can't do this if you want to get into politics one day. He would say that to me <laughs> like it was crazy. a real thing. That's crazy. That, like, and was, you, you weren't, like, interested in it at not all. Not even a little. That's I was like, so what funny. the hell are you talking about, dude? Like, I would never want, look at how it ages you. I would never want to be here. <laughs> yeah. None of them do enough Botox. That's what I'd say. <laughs> Hillary Clinton is actually 29 years old. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> She's younger than Chelsea. <laughs> but because, like, Trump got in office and he is who he is, and he's just, like, this big scumbag, I'm like, I told you nobody cared. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> so when did your dad give up? Was he disappointed that you didn't go to law school? Like, what was um, his they've deal? Been, they were trying the whole time. Like, they would call me crying and this and that and doing whatever. <laughs> like, it was it was Jesus. bad for a really long time. And then what? What ended up happening is, like, I was also lying to them about being a virgin. Uh, so oh, until I was twenty six. Oh, wait, your parents know you're not a virgin? Yeah. How did how my did parents that know I'm not a virgin? Oh, uh, okay. Maybe yeah. Zara and I were raised Muslim. Yeah. So we're oh, just, maybe we're that's just, what it is. Oh, we the wild Hindus over here. Yeah. <laughs> we just don't want to bring shame on our family, yeah. so we'll just carry it within ourselves. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It'll turn into well, I don't want to say I'll be a virgin for forever. <laughs> <laughs> my mom like <laughs> Zara. Zara loves to party, but she's never had sex. <laughs> Just invite me to your parties. She goes to all those closed leg parties. I have a feeling I know why she's not invited to parties. (laughs) Anyway, damn it. Go it, ahead. Uh, it was it was just like I got tired of my mom like slut shaming because like I would post like the more I started doing things the more like my voice and my face was on like the internet yeah. and TV and stuff so it became harder to hide yeah so they would see my mom thought I was writing jokes about shit she I thought I should say you know like I was trying to be an edgy female uh, comic so she didn't know but she kept being like take it down take it down you're embarrassing the family take it down oh, this is God. Embarrassing. like my dad printed out Google images of me and circle the ones where he thought I was too slutty. And I wasn't even, there was no body in it. It was just like a seductive face. And I'm like, are you out of your goddamn mind? <laughs> that's so sweet it's that so, they cared enough to do that. That's what my mom you know? said. <laughs> it's so that's overbearing. Really but it's the thing really is, I think, I, I think preferred they, the neglect. I, yeah, I to think me that, it was, it's overly, it's over control. I, the issue, I think the issue that we have with our parents be, is be like, so it's either the, the neglect or the fact that they but, care, or the fact that they care so much, but their care is misguided. It's, it's like, like, they're, they're like after a certain it's, age, it's letting your child grow up. It's harmful it's, at a certain point. Yeah. It's like their intent is like, they want you to be happy. They want you to be well taken care of, but they no longer in practice know how to implement that. Because our like our desires and our goals and everything is com- so far from what theirs. Yeah, were. What, I think they want you to be happy, but what that looks like in actuality is very different from yes. the blueprint they want to shove on you or yeah. me. Or it's like us. you can hug someone, but don't do it too hard because you'll kill them. <laughs> like, that's exactly what happened. But they were like, and they were writing me. It was my birthday. They called me on my birthday, and they started complaining about a video, and they slut shamed me on my birthday, and I just snapped. I like couldn't do it anymore, and then like I just started screaming like I'm not a virgin, like into the phone. <laughs> I've been fucking though. <laughs> Has it, did it get better after that? After they started, I um I stopped talking yeah. to them. So it was like yeah. I wouldn't. Interesting. Hmm. Zara's in that how, space how long, right now. How long did that last? How did the how long did the no I speaking? I don't know because I ended up coming enough. up beca- coming back because my dad got sick. Oh, so okay. oh. that's why. Like I wanted to know what was happening and what was going on with him. So mm-hmm. I came back for that reason, and then we started talking again, and it was better. But it was more of like, I can't deal with the fucked up shit you say to me. And it's not healthy for me to keep this around me. So I'm like, I have to, I cannot talk. To I'm you. kind of, yeah. I'm like that way too, where I've like been pulling away from my family a lot. And it's because of like, it's hard for them to accept like my personality. <laughs> Just yeah. like, because I like on the drive down from San Francisco to LA, my parents drove me down and my mom was just going through my tweets asking what they meant. And I was like, I, was like, I can't explain to you this vagina joke. Like I can't, <laughs> I can't do this. But like your, your tweets as of late have been, have been a little racy. Has she, yeah. has she reached yeah, out to I've, you about those? Not, not yet. Share, share a couple of those gems with us. <laughs> what did I, okay. <laughs> Let me see. I think this one was is... literally I get fucked. No, I'm just I did say I got <laughs> fucked, which I never like I I recently because I because this guy was a dick to me. I've recently just been like, fuck it. And I just like post what I <laughs> feel like what was one. Um, I the, guy, the, last, the last guy I liked ended it with me because he couldn't commit. And then in parentheses to making me come. <laughs> <laughs> and, so, then, and then uh, was your mom like, what does that mean? No, she hasn't talked to me about it yet. Come as an arrive. I haven't, what is that? I haven't I haven't talked to her on the phone yet. <laughs> this is the problem. It's like I talk to them so infrequently. Okay, the other one before that was uh, a guy once told me he loves everyone and only wishes for peace in the world. Then he fucked me and blocked me, just like Buddha used to do. Super zen. <laughs> <laughs> 
So those were the that one like was the first time that I talked about like getting fucked online. Yeah. And I was like, uh, okay, this is just out there now. But it was a good I, I felt like it was a good enough joke to, to put it out there. And it was like one of those things where like my family always said that they're like, okay, all the girls do it, but why do you have to be the one that talks about it? That's kind of yeah. what they said to me. It's and parents. It was like, yeah, because I guess in the in like in the Indian community, everyone's about this sense of propriety yeah. and yeah. family value and honor and all that shit. Everyone's but, about Hassan says this in his homecoming in Homecoming King, where he's like, it's it's all about what will people say. Yeah. 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 And, and it's I, they have this obsession with what will people say. I oh, hate that. Fuck. I'm completely against that yeah. uh, mentality. So unhealthy. Yeah, I think it's really unhealthy. I think it leads to some Suppression and secrets and shame all those and all people those negative aren't shit. happy like no. that's the thing it's like the Acting people that out. care the most about appearance are the least happy and the least well put together They're miserable yeah this I mean, is why I'm miserable and I always look great I- <laughs> 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 bitch you do look good though thank you so okay. on brand so on brand I'm trying to figure out my brand uh, I really, my brand yeah I don't, I don't think you need to figure it out I think you got it. Okay, thank you. But yeah, no, it's it's so true. It's like it. Uh, I feel that's I think why I love comedy so much. It feels like such a breath of fresh air because it's a place where you're rewarded for being your true self. Yeah, out like for everyone. Yeah. Yeah. and that's like it feels so good and like it. it feel like this. That's why we get like this acceptance from everybody else but our families. But like, that's the thing is like I kind of wanted to be that. Like, just even sometimes I feel like I'm even like playing up. I don't have that much sex. I'm tired all the time, you know. Like, but I talk <laughs> about it on stage because I want to be that voice, so someone can look at me and be like, "Oh, well, maybe I'm not a monster." Take you know the what I shame mean? Yeah. out of the equation. Because it's yeah. Because it yeah. It's that that's the thing that bothers me too. Is that like all of these things that we talk about like doesn't make us like we're good people. Why does it matter what we talk about? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I mean, we're talk. I mean, look. Okay, how are people born? Because their parents fucked. Um, okay, that's I, like that's very basic. Uh, like, what are we just my never mom and dad? Why is there shame in that? So I don't know what you're you were talking. adopted. <laughs> someone else fuck. They're just I mean, pure. they don't fuck. Okay, <laughs> it's clearly going on in the subcontinent. I mean, like they, I there's clearly an overpopulation problem. Yeah. So, so it's just like fucking. it's. I, I think it's absurd and sick to not talk about something that's just yeah. part of life. The I only. Agree. The, the time that I talked to my parents about it was when the Me Too stuff was happening. Yeah. And I wanted to post like this whole list of shit that happened with me. But I but part of that was like like stuff that happened in college where it like wasn't consensual, but it had been before. You know what I mean? And so like I had hard. to I had to talk to my parents about it before posting it because I didn't want them to freak the fuck out because they didn't know anything. Yeah. So then I had a conversation with my parents about how like, you know, I've had people assault me I like had the good old college rape uh, but like but you know like shit like that where it's like like I had to I never talked to them about the only two sex conversations I had with my parents was my mom would randomly just turn to me and be like well your father and I waited till we were married and then, did they? I, I, Probably. I think I believe it my but they were those innocent. crazy Hindu you know? uh, no, <laughs> did, they, did they know each other before they got married dude though? it's a whole Bollywood story oh, my, my, oh cause it was a love marriage it was a love marriage uh, Ooh. My dad's family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah they waited. <laughs> they waited. <laughs> Be like, uh huh. Sure. Yeah. The, oh, the, the other, the other sex conversation I had with my parents before the the talking to them about it really was uh, I was telling them about how I needed that shot for the, like the HPV vaccine because I was on their insurance and they were like, <laughs> one of them was like, "Don't you need that if you're sexually active?" And I was like, "Um, well, <laughs> yeah." <laughs> <laughs> And then the other one was like, or like one of them was like, oh yeah, well if, if you're sexually active, you have a lot of stuff to worry about. And the other one went, yeah, like AIDS and stuff, and then walked out of the room. <laughs> and I was like, this is very informative. Thank you. Can I still get the vaccine though? <laughs> Dude, your parents seem so cool. We should have them on the podcast. Oh my god, <laughs> no. <laughs> Next they time they're in town. They will spend the whole time just telling you what's wrong with me. That, hey, look, That's a good one. Yeah, I bring mean, them on. No. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> everybody's parents are going to do yeah. that. Are we all, oh, if we all get our parents on, I'll try to get my parents <laughs> yeah, on. Can I, can I hire an actor to be my dad <laughs> or something? <laughs> who are you going to, which they see celebrity would you hire to play your parents? Um, I don't know. I, I, no, maybe, no, he's old. <laughs> he's more like a grandfather now. Yeah. He's, he's like, uh, for our white listeners, he's like the Morgan Freeman <laughs> of yeah. Indian I cinema. I heard he, he gets ladies though. Yeah, Still. of course. Yeah. Why I mean, wouldn't it make he? Sense. He's Amitabh. <laughs> but like, I'm talking about ladies. But if I'm like, honestly, if Amitabh was, if Amitabh Bachchan wanted to take me out to dinner and was like, I'll put you in a Bollywood movie, I'd be like, okay, sure, let's do this. On brand. On no, brand. But like, why not? It's like 
Jai story. And Are you like, gonna take that Amitabh butt dick? Uh, maybe. I don't know. If Jai is okay with it, I tried to make that work and it if, didn't. If it, him, if him and his wife are in an open relationship, I think about it. They're not. He's like definitely cheating on her. <laughs> you don't think she knows? Uh, maybe. I don't know. I feel bad. Okay, this is one thing that I want to talk about uh, <laughs> because it's just on my mind. Is there, like, I feel like everyone in L.A. just, like, cheats and, like, does, like, horrible shit to each other. I've just seen it so much. And I, like, I feel like that's, like, such an entertainment world like, thing. like, celebrities? Yeah. Or... or, like, even rising celebrities and, like, <laughs> just, I don't like. Know. I feel like you need to be above a certain income bracket in order to be allowed to cheat on your wife. You know? Like, <laughs> yeah, but Jay-Z, that's not a thing. That's, that's Jay-Z, Trump. Up. <laughs> That's what fucked up, up brand. No, it's so no, fucked it up. Fucked it's up. It's, it's totally fucked up. It is totally fucked up. It makes up. me just not want to date anyone. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, men are horrible. We've all agreed to it, admit <laughs> it to it, and we're all like letting, like Cardi B's letting her dude like fuck around. You know, okay, um, Beyonce is letting Jay Z fuck around. Okay, I know that. Why is she not? Know. Okay, I him. know that they are, but please don't bring Cardi B and Beyonce into this. I'm, <laughs> I'm just saying, as a society, we've all accepted all the way up from like the bottom all the way to the top you know politics like it, it's all accepted men will cheat and uh, with their with enough counseling we'll get through it you know no, like I, I do feel no, that hopeless I don't know about yeah. that I don't know I mean you're not I don't know you're not in one. a relation you're, you're not I mean, if there are plenty wait, of guys Zara, who Zara get is saying, dumped wait, wait, and Zara divorced. saying that, and yeah. she's the only one in a relationship, right? Now. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Zara, like, you trying to? You are you giving to, your man the pass right now? What's happening? I'm just saying, like, if I'm touring 300 days out of the year, she's trying to get the pass. Oh, well, that's okay. it, dude. Here's she's the thing. There's to, a difference between cheating and being in an open relationship. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and maybe like maybe like we don't know the entire story. Like, I'm pretty sure Melania married Trump, knowing that he's gonna well, fuck around. You know, like well, she. I'm sure she does not want to fuck and I'm sure Beyonce (laughs) she please yeah please fuck but like (laughs) I'm sure Beyonce like married Jay-Z knowing like do you it's gonna happen I like I don't think Beyonce is like but that's you know naive but you're saying that like we're letting it happen but at the same time you're saying that like if you want to enter like these relationships with these men then you have to just accept it or or you have like that you have to like put down a hard line like Beyonce why didn't Beyonce well like Dave Chappelle I don't believe Dave Chappelle has ever cheated on his wife from the sounds of it. Uh, <laughs> has he? No I'm just gonna step away I mean, from the mic right now. Dave <laughs> Chappelle, you're my favorite comedian. I love, he's like, I love Dave you. Chappelle. What happens so outside much. Ohio stays outside oh, Ohio. Just okay. I'm not. Yeah. I, I think I, we're I, feel all, I, don't, I haven't seen anything, so I'm gonna. I don't tap know. Out. I don't know anything. Honestly, I don't, I don't know, know a single man in Hollywood who's a celebrity who hasn't cheated on his wife. It's fucking terrible. I don't it's like. So honestly, sad. I don't know a single one. I was reading this like article. Okay, you. So was so, on the guest. So, She's a guest, and I'm just talking. All right, about her. So, but, you, okay. Your thoughts. What are your thoughts on the whole cheating thing? I well, know it's wrong, but I'm just saying, like Beyonce, like if you felt like it was so wrong, you should have left Jay Z. Is that's all I'm saying? Like you people. Well, need I don't to leave think you. I don't know about that. I think everyone has. They're gonna do what's right for them in that context. Like I, I think people are capable of change and learning consequences. So it's like if you want to give him a good faith try and you've worked through it and forgiven, and he's truly apologetic and realized what he did was like selfish and being an asshole and he's like truly willing to make amends then I mean if that's your decision that's your judgment call so I Mm -hmm. can't from the outside in like sit there and be like you should have done this um me personally like anytime I've gotten a whiff of like it took a while I had to go through an abusive relationship to realize I'm not going to be treated like shit. So it's like, even the last guy I dumped, it's because he wasn't nice. Like that was it. I was like, Mm -hmm. you're not a giving or a caring person. And when I'm in a relationship, I give and I care for the person I'm with. Even if it's a casual thing, I still want them to be okay because we're spending our time together. So if I'm not getting that, or if I'm not giving a level of respect, you're done. You're fucking done. You're out. There's not even a second thought. I don't give a shit what we have invested in each other. You're out. Oh my God. I really needed that right now. (laughs) I really needed it. (laughs) It's I'm done. It's like after like being yeah. It took like being with like a living devil to get me to that point because like and I feel like as messed up as it is, I think it comes from partially from an arranged marriage mentality where it's Mm -hmm. like my parents are like love isn't something that's there immediately. It's hard. You work towards it. You stay with someone and you fix what's wrong. That's what my dad. Every time I like ask my parents, I'm like, do you guys like love each other? What happened? Blah blah blah. (laughs) Like no, I'll like ask them about how they feel about each other, and my dad's like. My dad will be like, we made a commitment. 
<laughs> Sometimes. That's, that's kind of like, but that's how all of them think. That's yeah. like, and even in like love marriages, which my parents have, they're like, you make a commitment and you work. And it's like, at some point, it's not worth it. That's, guess, that's how my brain was wired. Yeah. And that's what kept me with this guy who was like an alcoholic. I'm like, let's work together. Let's get you back on your feet. Let me help fix you. Like, let's, and that's not on me. I deserve a certain amount of shit. And that's the beautiful thing. As, as fucked up as dating in America is, I have the freedom to leave. You don't have to take advantage yeah. of that. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're not like, arranged I, with your boyfriend. I, 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 yeah, my parents yeah. are still together after, like, all of our parents are still together, yeah. right? Yeah. And, like, sometimes they, they like, I think they like to argue. That's their dynamic. <laughs> and sometimes they'll call me and try to triangulate and get me involved. Yo, my parents do that, too. And Same. I'm like, look, you either... You either choose to stay in the marriage or you look at other options, other options meaning divorce. Like I was asking my parents, like if you if you're going to keep asking me about this, should I say get divorced? They're still married. I said that, too. But that's like they don't call me and stick me in the middle of their business anymore. Yeah, I've definitely said that to my parents. I think with any arranged marriage, like you like you're not. I don't think there's a thing where you're meant to be with each other in any marriage, in any relationship, in any marriage. You have ups and downs and whatever in any committed relationship. That's that's why I'm saying like. Yeah, like everybody needs to take a stance like this is fucked up. You're treating me in a very shitty way. You're not being faithful. I'm leaving. But all- not enough women are doing that. No one's being like Suba and like saying, okay, I'm getting out of this. Yeah, like yeah. enough people, people are do, doing this. Eventually. People do. But it's, 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 it's really hard when you have kids and you're married. Like course. it's a different thing. Of course. Like- so then that's why I think cheating has just become an accepted part of life that men get away with. I've but left many men. There, yeah, yeah, I was gonna say absolutely. there's a, there are consequences to their behavior, and like women do leave men. I of think, course they but do. I, that, feel but like, those, I feel like there's so many more women that they just keep going, and it's like the cycle of a it's so a emotional men. it's a cycle of emotional yeah. abuse. Powerful and it's, men, it can get sucks. Away with that. Yeah, but it sucks that they do because it's like they don't see women as individuals; they just see them as like this next like rotation to go through. Well, here's the thing: I want to challenge all females. Like, just be better about yourself and be more secure with who you are. Because the problem is there are always naive, insecure women out there who will, like, be with these men for whatever reason. Like, there was, just, there will always be a Melania out there. I just you know feel what I bad mean? that it's on the women. Like, I, I like that fucking sucks. Unfortunately, that, that, men, that's, that men don't want to be better people. <laughs> men are horrible people. I mean, you can't change anyone else. <laughs> yeah. That, so I, there, to change I mean, there so are good guys out there yeah. who are, I like, what <laughs> are their numbers? <laughs> so, but, like, <laughs> put their numbers where your like, mouth is. <laughs> <laughs> men are great until that you try to date them. Well, <laughs> no, but I know I've seen guys Guys who like genuinely love their wives and I couldn't yeah. in a million years see them cheating like people I know like yeah. very close and have worked with very intimately and know like outside of work and I'm like okay this is a good dude and then I met dudes who are with their wives and I'm like you would cheat on her in a heartbeat like I've seen both ends of the spectrum and it's like not all men are commitment phobic yeah. yeah so it just I think it's a very individual to individual thing and it's it's I think relationships are changing in general but the fact that everyone's had to be put into this single monogamy like category when not everyone is built that way yeah. has also led to a lot of fucked up shit but, yeah but right. I also think that like women aren't like it, monogamy is built to like for a lot of people uh, it makes like women feel safer and so like not being monogamous is harder for women I think like it's easier for them to get access to dick, but that dick could be dirty. That dick could be dangerous. That dick, you know, like there's all these other risks that we that we're exposed to, which is why monogamy is like safer and easier for a lot of women, because it's like you can't like out in the real world when you're not like when you're circle of friends or whatever, it's like harder to vet people. But do you think that could be our programming? Because yes. look, no, I'm, t- I'm talking about like physical like safety. I'm talking about like going out and meeting somebody new. There's a, a larger risk for women than there are for men. STDs yeah. affect us. STIs affect us differently. Right. We're more at risk for that. We're more, we're pregnancy. Like there are all these like physical, practical risks that make uh, relationships that aren't monogamous like harder for us. Mm. So that's why like inherently it's easier for us to be in a monogamous relationship just because of all these dangers. I mean, wouldn't the dangers besides pregnancy be the same for men, though? Also, no, just physical, like murder physical and violence. Rape and, and murder like, and assault and stuff. That's like are way... Are talking yeah. about... Okay, I thought you were talking about diseases. Yeah, diseases. No, diseases we're, are... We're women are more susceptible yeah. to STIs and stuff. And we, we have oh, we suffer okay. higher consequences. Women are also susceptible to rumors, you know? Like, it, rumors don't really spread about guys. Guys, like, it's still that bad, you know? And we know this in the comedy community, too. If you, like, sleep with a few comics... Everybody knows about it. Yeah. Whereas comics will fuck around with whoever the hell they want. Groupies, other female male comics. comics. <laughs> they could be fucking other male comics, yeah. whatever, you know. But yeah, it's just like 
being a woman in general, I'm just saying it's just harder and we have to like push ourselves in every possible way because we've all collectively as society have agreed men are scum and I'm they cheat happen. and they, you know, like, so for women, stop letting this bullshit happen is what I'm saying. I'm All sorry. Right. I'm sorry. I just have to get that out there. Zara solves everything. No, I'm not solving. I'm not solving anything. It's I'm a, just saying. What's be the better. solution? Just stop. My well, solution like, is if a guy cheats they, on you and you're in a monogamous relationship, leave. Yo, but Beyonce. thank you, fucking. <laughs> I'm just mad at Beyonce. Sorry. Why are you uh, mad at Beyonce? Because she should have left Jay Z. Take but, are, yo, but they but they got a couple are, fire albums out of it though. There sure, are plenty whatever. of women that not I, I I don't know what the statistics are, but women still cheat on men too. Like we are also like that's what the whole Justin Timberlake crimey river shit was about. Yeah. It was about Britney blowing everybody behind his back. Like that that shit happens on the other end of the spectrum too. You know, like I just. Uh, um, I don't know. I just want to to say men are scum. It's like, nah, they're just people and hold them to if society and women and other men hold themselves. If everyone just holds them to the standard, then they'll rise to the occasion yeah. and start acting better. Because it's not like there are these rabid dogs running around. It's like, no, they're people and they can learn to behave appropriately. I think we're kind of saying you know? the yeah. same thing. I'm just taking a stronger stance that men are horrible people. <laughs> I mean, I say this the week that Bill Cosby got convicted, finally, you know, <laughs> like it, it's just an overwhelming amount of evidence that how horrible men are versus women. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> so just be stronger, women. Just be, you know, sorry. I, I do think that like I'm kind of tired of like hating I'm tired of hating men and white people. Like, I'm tired that it's, like, this thing that's, like, constant, like, people make jokes about it, whatever. It's, like, boring. It's, like, a boring thing to, like, hate or whatever. But it is, like, something that I've, as, I, you have a really great joke about it, how, like, you're eating cereal and, like, 10 years after an incident and then you remember, like, this racist thing that happened, like, oh, forever yeah, ago. Yeah. That, I love that joke um, because What's I really. What's the joke? Tell us. Yeah. I was. Oh, no, no. oh God, no! <laughs> or, or don't, don't. We're you like don't have Uber to. driver now. Just yeah. tell us a joke. Um, are you a comedian? But, <laughs> tell me a joke. But that's like. But she was. She was talking about how, like you become more aware as you like get older and you mm -hmm. realize like all the shit that's happened to you in the past. And I think that's what's happening right now with me. And I'm just like mm -hmm. realizing all this shit that happened with men and with like you know uh, like other people and stuff. And I'm just like I'm kind of like tired of it. I'm like I'm tired of like getting mad about this. Stuff. <laughs> like I don't want to be mad There's at a, lot to a be whole mad about. gender. Yeah. I don't know. What are you happy about, Suba? <laughs> Let's talk about that. Let's just try to make this positive. What, what am you I? Happy? What's, the fav what's your favorite thing that happened today? What's my favorite thing that happened today? Oh, well, this is going to be real sad. Besides I this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I, this is dorky, but I'm really happy I bleached my whole bathroom. Like, it just gives me a sense Aww, of peace. Clean. I feel good Yay. about that. Like, that's, a clean bathroom is like, it everything. makes me feel clean like, bathroom, clean kitchen. Ah, my face is on yeah. fire from all the bleach and enclosed space. <laughs> but I feel Your complexion peace. looks great, by the way. I so was, that bleach is so helped. fair and lovely over I there. I was going to go there, but I don't want to. Too, too real, too real. That's so funny. So you, are you like a clean freak a little bit? Uh, if I had the time to be, I would probably be <laughs> cleaning everything all the time. But I'm like, I'm a clean person. Yeah. Yeah. Did you uh, did you grow up with an OCD mother? Because mm. I did. Me too. Are my, all moms like this? No, my mom legit has like OCD. Like, yeah, mine too. Yeah. She like taps things and stuff. But I think it's all it all stems from the same discomfort and trying to find control. And yeah, yeah I mean, I think I mean, addiction, it's OCD, also like a it's also an actual out. neurological disorder. Okay. Okay, scientist. <laughs> so, yeah, but, but I mean, it's. All that's treatable, like that's all you can there, retrain your brain to I mean, respond to stuff where you can become dependent on external fixes. Yeah, there's medication that you can take, but it's like a legitimate like disorder with like the basal ganglia. Anyways, um, <laughs> but, <laughs> it wasn't. <laughs> yeah, but like I was just, well, like, what do you mean by like retrain your brain? Retraining your brain, like just I mean, like with all addiction or OCD or whatever, it's sort of a feeling of a void. So yeah, it could be. Just, I just look at it as like more physical thing. We can talk about this. Yeah, <laughs> I, know, I the think I think is smirking at you a little. I'm not bit. smirking. I'm just saying like I think emotional health is neglected and not acknowledged enough in this society. Agreed. And I think that affects every aspect of our, every aspect of our life. And I think all of that the phys the physical manifestation of that is the last step. That's like your body saying like you're fucked. You need to change something. So I think it's, it can be that, and then it can also be like there's something like there's a chemical imbalance. Like yeah. it's a mix. I mean, look, I have both. 
Because yeah. I'm, you know, everyone in my family is on something for the chemical treatment. But the thing is, I don't know what it's like to live without that mm. because I've been on this since I was 15. That's more than half of my life. Yeah. So if I had the option to cope with this in a different way, you know, I don't know if I could. Do I need that chemical stuff? Do I have an imbalance or a predisposition? Sure. But like, can I cope with it in other ways that don't involve chemistry? Maybe. I don't know. I mean, there's, yeah, there's a lot of different like therapeutic or coping skills and some people need medication and some don't. Yeah. Maybe we should have a, a psychiatrist on here. <laughs> no, I would, I would absolutely would love, really I can try to get my, like one of my neuro professors to come on and talk about stuff like that. Um, but like, I, like it would be so dope. Cause like, I think part of the reason I hesitate when, like when you said that was because it like, it, it bothers me, uh, especially out in L.A. when people are like, you need to do the yoga thing or like the crystals or something when it's like I don't want to blame someone for like a physical condition that nobody can see. Mm -hmm. You know, so it is true that we need to address mental health issues and address like emotional conditions and stuff or like things that affect your emotions a lot more. But it's also like people shouldn't be. I know that like medication isn't perfect and like people have different cocktails of it. They like need to try it. It's all these different things like with therapy. You have to like try all these different therapists to see if it works. But it's like I don't want people to be to think that it's just something they can solve with like a juice cleanse you know what I mean some for some people maybe that'll like make I mean that's happy. simplistic but I think a lot of this stuff to change it's so deep rooted in us it's a lifestyle change it's a perspective accepting change. expect accepting that help and that like then reaching out yeah I yeah. agree so Anyways. I mean I've looked just all the modes of of sort of treatment i've experienced scream into the abyss again, yeah <laughs> look screaming into the abyss to to weed to pills to just yeah to yoga just anything just to, I, i'm just trying to cope <laughs> i'm just trying to cope here yeah so suba how did you how have you been treating your your meltdowns in la <laughs> <laughs> she goes back to new york <laughs> besides bleaching your apartment <laughs> Yo, if you want to come ble bleach my bathroom <laughs> anytime, I just want to help you get get you centered. <laughs> I just want to make sure you're okay. Um, this is strictly for your benefit. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It's just a lot of, I don't, I should go back to therapy at some point, but it's a lot of like introspection and uh, just stuff like that. Just realizing things aren't that big of a deal talking to friends and family normally, you know. You still have friends and family after moving here? <laughs> yes. That's amazing. Congratulations. That's an L.A. success. <laughs> That's a right. story. Yeah, you made it. Um, okay. Uh, what do we wrap up with? We talk about, what's, who's your favorite Daisy celebrity? It's <laughs> <laughs> my favorite. Oh, um, this is going to be bad, but that's she's the only one who, like, really inspired me. As like, I mean, of course, you know, like, Amitha Bhajan and all that, like, I had in Ashwarya Rai growing up. But it's not like I was really that into Bollywood. Yeah. Honestly, I'm forgetting her name, which is why I feel bad about this. But the girl who played the lead in Bend It Like Beckham. Oh, I love her. Yeah. Oh, opposite Kara Knightley. Yeah, yeah. Kara Knightley, we all remember. <laughs> that's so sad. She was also on ER, right? I, uh, Parminda Nagra? Perminda Nangra. I should know that, but she's like... Yeah, Perminda Nangra. Nangra. Okay, she's she was... Uh, I loved Bend It Like Beckham because it ended up be becoming my life with comedy, sort of, like where mm -hmm. I yeah. also lied about doing stand-up and stuff and like snuck out and like I just loved watching that movie so our, much because our, our parents, our parents yeah. thought we were all lesbians at some point. <laughs> 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 That's really I think I'm lesbian. I was about to say because yeah. if, you know, they're either going to believe that I'm a lesbian or a virgin and what's more <laughs> probable, you know? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Suba, where where something. can our fans and friends find you? Uh, uh, Twitter at, at Suba, S-U-B-H-A-H, -H, and on Instagram at, at Subhaha. S-U-B-H-A-H-A, -H -A. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and our social media is at facial recognition comedy on Instagram and Facebook and on Twitter, it's at facial rec show or facial rec comedy. So, uh, F A C I A L R E C C O M E D Y. And then mine is Paula Viganalan, P A L L A V I G U N A L A N. That's my website, my Instagram, my Twitter, and my Facebook. Oh, uh, Fizza is at Fizza Dasani, F I Z A A D O S A N I on all platforms. And Zara Ali Live. Zara is Z A H R A Ali Live. Thanks. Bye. Thanks Bye. so much. Bye. Bye. Thank you.